congratulations to Arizona. They have proven everyone wrong along the way. They swept two division winners. They got past the fighting fills. How'd they do it, Pedro? Well, they did it with pitching, defense, and playing actually uh, uh, something that we didn't see in the first two games, which was the, the, the Diamondbacks chaos kind of game that they played. And we saw it in full display the last two games, and that's what they needed to do if they wanted to beat the mighty offense that the Philadelphia Phillies have. And they said it before game five, Jimmy. They called it a must win. They knew winning two at the bank would be a tall task. And Christian Walker said, we know what you're saying about us. We know you don't think we're supposed to be here. We love it. We use it as fuel. That's been their uh, rallying cry all season long, you know. Uh, you guys didn't expect this, but secretly we inside did. this clubhouse, That's of course right. you did, you called it, but secretly inside this clubhouse, we knew the type of team that we had, and they finally showed up to play their style of baseball. And that's getting on base, uh, pressing the other team, but more than anything, something they've done all postseason long, and that's come up clutch. Big two-out hits, not letting the rally die with a runner and get the scoring position. Kept pushing. Congratulations to the Diamondbacks. They deserved it. They played better. And the pitching, oh, my goodness. Oh, Eagle. my goodness. Ooh. I mean, you nailed Ooh. it. The, Absolutely. the, the pressure Filthy. and the willingness to take chances on the bases and set up the runs. Jimmy said it. The two-out hits, the speed, that's their game, Curtis. They won at their game. They finally did it. You know, aggressive behavior like they had talked about. We didn't see it the first part of the season, but that's what they had did for 100. 162 games. Now they're in the postseason. Not only did they get hits, they stole four bases. They did a hit and run or a run and hit, however it was, put some action on them and put the ball in play. Sack bunts and sack flies. Things that we thought are a lost art in this game all came into play tonight. Oh, you love that, Gerda. Oh, I love it because that's the, we forget about it for the rest of the season. But when you need to win a game, mm -hmm. you go ahead and execute it. Even the Phillies were trying to sack bunt tonight. When the game is on the line, the fundamentals have to come through, and they showed it tonight. Yeah, they were trying to squeeze out runs. Can we love on Corbin Carroll for a second? Second, I have it written down, second youngest player in MLB history with three hits and two steals in a playoff game. Only Ty Cobb was younger. He affects the game in so many ways. He does, and it was critical for him to have the game that he had tonight. We saw what it was like um, in the first, what, six games, you know, them having to move him around, but when he's doing his job, he's getting on base, he's causing havoc. Even if he's not spilling the threat of it, it keeps the defense on their toes. But tonight, everything worked for him. Big hit after big hit, getting on base. When they, when he goes, they go. He carries that attitude. Not He's, he's the energy, yes. I like what um, Cattell Marte brings to it. But when this guy is on, everybody else just picks up the slice like here we go guys we're on a train let's get going Pedro you see the pitcher when he's on first base he is looking over his shoulder the entire time well and 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 it wasn't just Carol doing that right but everybody that got on base was forcing the issue including Walker that last inning stole the bat like they were doing exactly what the Diamondbacks have been preaching they they pitch they play defense and they cause chaos in, in around around the field and that's what they did they did it to perfection and kudos to Tori Lobulo for doing the things that he was doing too with his team sometimes we got desperate out here like the first game with with Fad I, I thought I thought he was rushing into taking him out but today he did it perfectly when I thought he was gonna pull him a little bit earlier I thought he was gonna pull him when he got in trouble a little bit and he gave up the two runs I thought he was gonna pull him and then he left him in there, finished the inning, and started the inning fresh with another pitcher. How does anyone hit Ginkle's breaking ball? I mean, we love on the starters, and rightfully so. We have one of the best to ever do it right here on this desk. But there are bullpens across America whose names you don't know. They are your lifeline in October. We're watching the game back there with all the Turner staff back there. And they're like, how, did, how does he make the ball do that? <laughs> like right. Oh, right. Yeah, just like that. <laughs> I'm like, that's why he's a pitcher. That's why he's one of the best. I mean, everything looks like a fastball out of the hand, and it's just moving out, moving out. Even if you're saying not swing, they're doing it all there, and he's deceptive, and they got swing and miss after swing and miss. Better stuff than the, the closer. Filthy. You Absolutely. like my Filthy. breaking ball, by the way? It's like this. Like a hoo -hoo. It looked just like that. <laughs> it's unhittable. Congratulations to Arizona. The NL pennant belongs to the Diamondbacks. Second of game seven of the NLCS. We got you. John Kruk throwing out the first pitch. He had to get the overalls. Jimmy, of course. Johnny Kruk. Like all Phillies fans do. And it was Bedlam at the bank, Decibel City, as they call it. It was. So good. Arizona struck first with a Christian Walker RBI, and then in the bottom of the second, nobody out, Alec Bohm. 
First pitch fastball over the wall, left center field. Solo shot, the very first pitch he saw. What's it called? A ding dong. Johnson. Four seamer. Bum, Peter Seamer, Bum. Yes, please, to even the score. So Alec Bum walked in the fourth, and Bryson Stott said, come on home. In the bottom of the fourth, one out, a liner to the gap in left center field, scoring his Bum from first. This was interesting because the middle of the order showing up for Philly, we talked so much about not letting the big guys beat you. And it was them first. Look at Bryce. Look at Bryce. And the crowd. Look at the decibels. 107. 107. Decibels. Decibels. What's, what's considered like? I don't know. Loud. I was actually just thinking that. I should Google it. Diamondbacks do the little things well. It helps when you have the rookie of the year showing out Corbin Carroll. What a game. A grounder to center. RBI single. Emmanuel Rivera scores. I like the sinker. Gabriel Moreno, liner to right field. Remember, he was moved to the third spot in the order of this series. He had never hit there before. Before the championship, the MVP too. Mm, gets caught trying to go to second to end the inning, but the lead is taken. The damage is done. Philly's bullpen fully loaded. Listen to this: Jose Alvarado with a 0.00 ERA in the postseason on the mound. Carbon Carroll's with nine more. I mean, selfless, really. Sack fly. Sack fly. You know, just doing the thing that you need to do. Put the ball in play off of one of the toughest lefties in the game. And now you get an insurance run right there to put you up to. Alvarado's first run allowed in the postseason, this dude. This is my man. Uh, I mean, what can you say about Kevin Ginkle? He was everything you needed him to be. And that was really the only pitch that was hittable right there. He kind of, not that he's hungry, he threw it for a good strike. That's the only pitch that wasn't absolutely filthy. Hey, Dre was completely dominant. Came in five outs, nobody had an answer. He is, and it's hard to explain that sometimes those. Set up, man. Uh, I'm probably better than the closers. The strike away. Yeah, Here he comes. Mm, last call for the Phillies. Paul Seawald to Jake Cave. A pop up in game seven is in the books. It's in the glove. The baseball of the rookie of the year, Corbin Carroll. Perdomo taking a moment for himself. And Arizona doubles up the Phillies in game seven of the National League Championship Series. Congratulations to Arizona heading to their first World Series since 2001. They will meet up with the Rangers in Arlington. And what a ride it has been for Philadelphia. They got through Milwaukee. They got through Atlanta. Think about that seems like a month ago, doesn't it? One of the best lineups in all the game. And they had opportunities first and second. We always go back to that seventh inning. Trey and Bryce, it felt like that was the moment in time if it was going to happen. And, and it was, you're 100% correct. I, I think all of us to ourselves, at least maybe I'm speaking for myself, I don't want to project. I'm like, this is it. You know, yeah. not that it yeah. can't happen, but this, if something special is going to happen, you have the guys up that you want up. We saw it with Bryce mm -hmm. last year hitting a home run, sending the uh, Phillies to the World Series. I'm like, is it going to happen two years in a row? And he got a pitch to hit. I mean, it was a fastball, middle away, and he just oh, caught the bottom of the ball. But Look, you had the guys up that you wanted. Got to give credit when credit's due. Their bullpen was lights out all night. May have gotten away with a pitch to Bryce, but when things are going to happen for you, we all know sometimes it's just destiny. You can do everything wrong and it works out right. Throwing a fastball to Bryce right there in this situation and getting away with it. Whew. It almost seems like it was going, it was just meant to be best in boys. Yep. I, I, first and second, I was shaking in my boots. And I said to you guys, what? I said, some people aren't built for October. <laughs> <laughs> not at all. People came out and go, even if you're not a baseball fan, this is the time you watch. They make that pitching change. You're like, all right, all the action, all the time. You get 96 down the middle of the plate, <laughs> and Bryce popped guys, up. What do you throw into Trey Turner and Bryce Harper in that moment? What are you trying to do? Well, I guess uh, I, I needed to throw the same fastball he just threw because he got him out. <laughs> you start messing around with a breaking ball there, you might hit it 450 feet. But uh, you just have to give him a lot of credit for uh, being so gutsy and, and, and you know, challenging uh, both of those guys mm -hmm. uh, and making pitches also. But you know what, what probably had Harper – a little bit off that fast. What was the, the sharp breaking ball he was throwing? It was like 87 dropping it straight down, 12 to 6, and, and perfectly located. I also have to give a lot of credit to uh, Gabriel Moreno. Mm. Framing, blocking, allowing those guys to uh, actually bounce those balls and, and feel like they're, they're not going to let one go back behind the, the, the backstop. I, I, I thought Moreno did a great job. Could have easily been be the MVP. Uh, right, right along with Cattell Marte, but um, uh, overall Arizona just doing it ev 
I mean, in all angles. It did not end the Phillies' way, but there's a lot to be proud of for that Philadelphia Phillies squad. And Matt Weiner had a chance to talk with their skipper, Rob Thompson, not long ago. Rob, a 2-0 lead, a 3-2 lead. How did this get away? Well, we, you know, the Diamondbacks played well, and they pitched well, and they neutralized some of our guys. We had... We had some opportunities tonight, but uh, you know it didn't come through, and that's that's baseball. You got to tip your cap to them. Um, you know they they played their game when they came back here, and to, to come in this building and beat us in this atmosphere twice, um, that's it's an accomplishment, and, and so you tip your cap. There were big expectations here, obviously. Can you take any consolation from reaching this round from the wild card spot? Well, you know, I, I think it's difficult to get to this round back to back years. It really is. You got to have a good club, and you got to have some breaks along the way, and you got to play well. Um, so, I, you know, I'm, I'm proud of our club for the way they played and the way they they battled all year long. Um, we're very disappointed, but um, but they they have nothing to be ashamed of. Rob, thanks. Thank you. Absolutely nothing. I was just looking at the free agents for Philadelphia. Nola, Lorenzen, Kimbrell, Hoskins. This is going to be largely the same team next year, Curtis. It's balanced. It's got experience. And I yeah. think that's going to be the biggest thing. You have a team, like Tom said, that's been there back-to-back years. They've learned from it. They're hungry. They're ready to get back to it. And you build on that experience. Plus, you bring in a piece or two because you know they're going to do something mm-hmm. this offseason, whether it's a trade or a free agent. Oh, Dave Dombrowski is going to do more than one He's thing. already on the phone. <laughs> probably already. already. On the phone, bring that piece in that fits that culture, that blue collar mentality, that rough Philadelphia mindset that fits in, and they're back at it again. I was just thinking, uh, looking at the Arizona Diamondbacks celebrating. It is such a beautiful grind, right? Pitchers and catchers, Pedro, they report in February. We're in late October now, and these teams aren't done. It is a beautiful grind over 162, and it is to be celebrated for all these teams. Yes, and I I actually have to use one word to describe the Diamondbacks. It's grid and character. That's two. Because yeah, but but I'm just saying you can you can choose whichever one you want <laughs> to, define it, to define this team because both of them come together. You don't have grit without character, and you don't have character without grit. And this team struggle. They went to the lows of lows mm-hmm. and the highs of highs, uh, and you're seeing it right now. But they they somehow remain playing the same game stuck to the plan that they had and and even when we were upset here seeing how they use their pitchers and go back to the bullpen they continue to execute the plan that they had the entire season they did not run into panic they they got their butts kicked early in the season they didn't pay attention to that and they just kept rolling and rolling and playing the diamondbacks game that they know how to play and here they are in the postseason. Congratulations, Congratulations to them. Y felicidades al niño de Nisao. Que te el Marte. Muchas felicidades y estamos muy orgullosos de ti. You can't find chemistry on baseball reference, can you? We talk all the time about OPS and average. It takes culture. And Tori Lavello built it in Arizona. And perhaps they are not. That, there's the guy. Popping bottles, Lauren. What earn the burn, you know? Gosh, put the goggles over your eyes. <laughs> nope, got to earn it. Yeah. And congratulations back after this.